I'm basically using the scale that we're going to learn today. like to do, particularly jazz solos, is to kind of create some kind of um, like a hook or a theme. Uh, think of uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, da, 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 da. It can be a rhythmic theme. So like something like, that's it. Okay, so that's my little hook. You keep adding to it, or you do different. You don't need to be playing all up and down. That's kind of a Pat Metheny trick. jazz chat room love connection chat room going on here okay let me turn this off super cheesy chords it's basically the chord progression to breeze by george benson uh which was kind of my introduction to um to jazz which is ironic because i always say that that album single-handedly killed jazz music in america um and uh so uh, I kind of obviously at that point went backwards, um, pretty much got into every George Benson record. And then I was from Indianapolis and so was Wes Montgomery. And I got into Wes Montgomery, such an amazing guitar player. And um, somebody asked the other day if uh, you have to play with a pick and Wes Montgomery played with his thumb and uh, insane, insane player, really fast. So um, let's uh, let's go ahead. If you, you know, if you have the guitar in your hand, let's go ahead and do some warm ups. Um, and if you want, uh, if you need the exercise, let's see, I have exercises for guitar playlist right here. Let me copy this. Uh, there's some here. The one that's the one we're going to do is here. And, um, yeah. And you know, it's, it's great to have, and I'll tell you once, I don't know, Verdi, if you were here when I said this, um, and it, I was watching that other live that other live stream that you recommended yesterday. That guy's organized. <laughs> here, here I am. I'm doing like this. Okay, so take a screenshot. <laughs> that guy had like windows all over the place. I'm like, dang. Okay, he knows what he's doing. I'm just kind of uh, I'm just kind of a hack over here. I'm just kind of having fun. So uh, hopefully you guys aren't aren't too disappointed with my. Uh, my live streaming skills. I'm going to go, I need to make my scale. I haven't done that yet. I've been trying to do that in advance, uh, but I just forgot. So uh, we have another scale. It's going to kind of be spread out over five frets. Um, and it's built around the G form. Remember the number one pentatonic was built around the G form. That was this one. Um, in fact, why don't we do the, this as a warm up? Okay. Let's go uh, first finger on the seventh fret and on the bottom string. And there's, cause we're gonna, let's review this pentatonic because this pentatonic has five of the seven notes we're gonna need for the diatonic scale that we're gonna learn today. Uh, but remember, this is our favorite. Um, this is the best number one pentatonic because it it just is, uh, <laughs> it's it just lays in the, it feels good on the hands. Uh, everybody's used it so much. So, so many solos that we all know and love use the pen this pentatonic shape. 
but also because, as I said before, it has three major roots and three minor roots. And that's going to also be true for the, the scale, the diatonic scale. It's going to have three D major scale roots and three B minor scale roots. Uh, so it makes it a really good go-to if you need to play a B minor scale or a D major scale. And again, it's completely movable. So when you learn this, you're learning 12 scales. So, okay, seventh fret, pinky on the 10th fret, seventh fret next string, ninth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret. Okay, backwards, 10, seven, 10, seven, Seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, ten, seven. Perfect. Got your orange telly out. This is kind of orange, isn't it? It's a, it's a bit of a sunburst. Okay. Now let's do another one, Verdi. This one's for you. Okay. You got your pick out. I let's do the same thing we just did, but hit every note twice, down up, like this. Just doing that so you don't have a pause between the plucks. So it's like. I like doing that. I, I, uh, a guitar player that would do that a lot in his soloing was uh, Lee Rittenauer. You probably don't know who that is, but. I do a lot of rhythm playing, like I'll be, you know, like, uh, you know, that kind of vibe, it's kind of a, kind of a cool eighties, um, R and B Michael Jackson, uh, David, David Williams played a lot of guitar on Michael Jackson records and he did that kind of stuff. Yeah, and so you can totally go slow on it too. And that's slow for me. Sorry, that may be fast for some of you. Okay. Hey, Pat, Patrick. Yeah, you're right. It was. These are definitely, this is a solid guitar. It's just a solid guitar. Very well made. You can see, although, you see that white right there? That's cotton. I stuffed the back with cotton because the springs would ring sympathetically. <laughs> If I hit a short chord like that, the springs would ring and it would get picked up by the pickups and it was like kind of annoying. So, cause it would often trigger the, the noise gates and things like that in weird ways. And it was like, just sounded weird. So I just stuffed the back full of cotton. The whammy bar still works. It doesn't really affect the whammy bar at all. It just got rid of the sympathetic vibrations in the springs. So. <laughs> So let me finish writing out my scale for this is the third uh, diatonic scale we've done. And um, it's based on the pentatonic number one, the one that it's so we're now on the G form. And again, the pentatonic scale, the, the D major pentatonic was D, E. F sharp, A, and B, okay? Those are the notes in that. So we have D, E, F sharp, A, B. That's the pentatonic, D, D major pentatonic. Okay, D major diatonic, it's gonna be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, 
C sharp, basically, and of course B would be the res resolution. You just play the first part of that. You know, if you didn't resolve it, it would you'd be like your audience is going to be like, get there, get there. So it's a good way to mess with your audience. That's highly recommended. I highly recommend to try to to really tick off your audience whenever you can. Okay, <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, I could just sit here, just make a a live stream just of me doing that and, and messing with people. Um, yeah, and this has humbuckers in it. So it's got kind of a fat sound. It doesn't really have that good thin strat sound uh, that I actually really love. So this one's more, I use this more for rock stuff if I'm gonna do like rock or whatever. Um, but sometimes I can, you know, use it for jazz or whatever. I, I use it for funk too, but uh, okay. Um, now uh, here's the scale. I'm gonna circle the lowest D which would be the major root. I'm going to put an X through the lowest B, which would be the minor root. And this is the G form. And we, we have to drop down um, to the sixth fret for one string. Okay. So technically I'm good, the bottom note is on the sixth fret, but really this scale is largely placed at the seventh fret. So there it is. Hopefully you can see that. Your screen cap. I'll get my face out of the picture. You don't have to look at that. In fact, I really should do this whole thing like this, right? Would that be better? <laughs> at least now you know I'm wearing pants. All right, let's see. And and for the new for the newbies, uh, if I touch my face, you have to take a drink. It's a drinking game. I got my coffee here. So wait a minute. So everybody can take a drink. I'm going to do that. Now we can all take a drink. Okay, now, like I mentioned before, there are basically just three uh, shapes on, on each of the strings that we may use in this. We may do first finger, uh, third finger, fourth finger. That's one shape. We may do uh, first finger, second finger, th fourth finger. Okay, so one, two, four, or one, three, four. And then there's two variations on the other possible uh, fingering and that's one three or two four. Um, I think yesterday we didn't we have a let's see what was the scale we did yesterday? We did the um, oh yeah, yeah, so we actually started with two four, that was the very first one, was two four, and we ended with a one three. Uh, but basically, the only so you're really only going to have three different shapes per string, so it's not like you have to memorize a lot of things. Now, I also have a thing I call threepers, threepers. Um, I write it like this. I made it up. Um, but basically what it is, is it's a way to play diatonic scales with only with three notes per string. Every one of these scales that we're learning somewhere, if you'll notice on the C form scale, okay, um, on the sec, on the third string, we had two notes. On the uh, A form, on the sixth string, and of course on the first string also, we only had two notes. And on this one, on the fourth string, we're gonna only have two notes. Um, and so that's great, but one of the things, if you really, you know, one of the tricks to playing fast is to kind of voice things and finger things in a manner where it, it lays down better. And so I came up with Reapers, which is um, a way of playing scales using three notes per string. Um, and I may talk about those in the future. I've got a video on it. I may have two videos on it. Um, I think I did one recently, um, and in that in that uh, system, there's also only three shapes. It's also, you know, one, one, two, four, or one, three, four, but also one, two, with a stretch. Okay, so for example, a G major scale played this way. I fingered it that way was so that for the right hand, it was consistent. You'd be down, up, down, and then up, down, up, down, up, down. So you're plucking three notes on every string and it makes the right hand a lot easier. And it makes it a lot easier to play fast, I feel like. Um, 
because these scales are great and you can get them pretty fast but it's that it's that two note string that always kind of mucks it all up so this is the scale today we're going to learn okay so let me uh, let's go let's do it we did the pentatonic already as our warm-up so let's do okay so we're going to start at the seventh fret with our first finger okay there's b so this is the root for the b minor so that's perfect it's, you know you could just straight away consider this a b minor scale okay then we're going to go third finger on the ninth fret pinky on the tenth fret okay let's play those three again one three four and again we're on the seventh fret we're technically seventh position, but again, on the third string, we're gonna have to jump down a fret. Okay. So one, three, four. Okay, and the next string do the exact same thing. One, three, four. All right. So let's do those two string, those two strings together. One, three, four, fifth string, one, three, four. And the next string, one, three. So now we have a whole octave for that B. Hit that low B and hit the high B. Those are both Bs. Now play it backwards. Uh, three, one, four, three, one, four, three, one. It drinks cheap beer. What time is it, Verdi? <laughs> I forget where you are. Well, it's, it's it's happy hour somewhere, right? Okay, so you can practice that little snippet of it, and that's a pure B minor scale right there. That's every note in the B minor scale. Okay, let's go on. Here's where we're gonna have to shift. So uh, let's let's start again from the beginning. One on the bottom string, seventh fret. One, three, four. One, three, four. One three, and then go down a fret now with your first finger, reach down, and go sixth fret with the first finger, two, four. So now we have a one, two, four combination. Do that again, okay? And then go back up a fret. We're just going down for that one note. Back at the seventh fret, one, two, four again, okay? Let's do that again on the sixth fret, third string. It's hard to see what string I'm on, but I'm on the third string. One, two, four and into the second string one two four okay and then on the top string one three four which shadows or mirrors sorry the the bottom string because they're both e strings okay let's go backwards four okay we're uh, starting on the tenth fret of the first string four <laughs> three one next string four two, one, down a fret. So now our pinky's on the ninth fret of the third string. Four, two, one, okay. Then you can go back up. I, I, I'd reach up with, you could play this with your pinky if you wanted to, and then go to your first finger, or you could play, reach out and get that third finger and get back into the, basically get right back into the seventh position. Um, okay, and so you go three on the, on the fourth string. This is the only string that we only have two notes on. Uh, third finger and first finger on the seventh fret, and then reach for the pinky, get the tenth fret, four, three, one, and then the bottom string, four, three, one. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, this time I'm going to call out the letter names of the notes, um, and then uh, you'll hear all of these notes that I wrote down here, e, D, uh, oh, did I? Yeah, there it is. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Okay, but we're going to start on B. B, C sharp, D. Next string, E, F sharp, G. Next string, A, B, down to the sixth fret with the first finger. On the third string, that's C sharp. There's our D, there's our root with our second finger. And then E, back up to the th seventh fret. F sharp, G, A, first fret, I mean, sorry, first string, seventh fret, that's uh, B, and then C sharp and D. So if we started on this note, the pinky note, so that would be the 10th fret of the uh, sixth string, 
and went to the 10th fret of the, uh, the first string, that would be two octaves of a D major scale, the Do, Re, Mi scale. fret it's B E flat yeah. and then if I start you know started on first finger on C it would be C minor okay so that's our new scale for today now let me play a little bit I'm gonna try to stick with it okay oh I, this is something I thought of okay remember I showed you the trick about moving the pentatonic up three frets and creating a minor version. Um, and like I said, I, I keep quoting George Benson. Um, oh, and by the way, this probably was the very first uh, scale that I ever learned on guitar that wasn't in open position. Um, you know, I, pro I started on Alfred's basic guitar method, but once I started getting into jazz and stuff, I'm sure this was probably because it is built around the pentatonic that we know, oops, sorry, that we know and love. Um, that I'm sure that this was probably the first scale that I learned. So, um, but here's the thing. Remember I said you, you could do, um, you could move back and forth. A, you could do the major pentatonic and then minor pentatonic to get that kind of George Benson sound. I mean, it really works great to play kind of the minor pentatonic over a major progression because it creates this kind of bluesy sound. Um, so here. Right? That sounds great. Okay. So the thing is, we can't do that really with, we can't really do that with the, um, this, this major scale with this, with the diatonic scales. Um, so we went from a five note scale, which is a little, a five note scale is going to be a little bit more vague, a little bit more usable than a seven note scale. So get seven note scales, I mean, clearly usable, but, um, you can't shift it quite like that. So I can't just play a D minor scale over that progression. Now, remember from the minor, I mean, from the pentatonic to the diatonic, the pentatonic was five notes and the diatonic was two notes. So one of those two notes that we added to this shape really doesn't work very well in, um, over a major progression. So if I move this, you know, if I made this D major scale a B, a D minor scale by starting on my first finger, okay, one of those notes isn't going to work. Um, but that says that one of the other notes does, and that would be the the uh, the second of that scale would work. It's the sixth note in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the sixth degree. If somebody says play the sixth of a scale, that's all they mean is they're, they're playing going up the scale. If somebody plays a says, says play a sixth chord, what they mean is play a triad with a sixth added, and that would be the sixth note in the scale. So uh, we should do a. Um, I've done lessons on understanding chord symbols, um, and uh, and kind of what they mean, and I would love to do that at some point too. Uh, if we were playing modally, which shape is this? Well. <clears throat> it's it's every shape. I mean, it's every mode in that one shape, depending on which note I start on. But if you were to think about where the first or the first note, the first finger, then this would be B minor or B um, B Aeolian, if you want to, you could call it that. But this is both B minor, oops, or B Aeolian. If you're keeping score at home. Um, it's also D major, okay? Or you could call that D Ionian if you want to get into the Greek of it, okay? And then, oh, I coughed. Yeah, it was a wet cough though. It was what's called, what, what they say, <laughs> it was a, uh, something's going on. I've only got 20 people watching. Is there something major happening that I don't know about? I don't want to know. Um, but uh, uh, the uh, they say if it's if it's a productive cough, 
um, it, you know, then you're fine. And it's just, it's just um, allergies. So it's just the top of my throat. I won't, I'm trying not, I'm trying very hard not to be sick. Uh, my wife has a cold though. So, so she's got, she's got a cold, but we just went for a walk. Okay. So now, um, so my point, okay. My point was, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Verde, I was still answering your question. So if we start on the A, then this is an A mixolydian. If we start on the G note, then it's G lydian. It's all of those, um, all of the modes are in there. Okay. I'm going to do a mode talk at some point. I mean, I, like I said, I really want to do a video uh, about it, but it's probably going to be at least a 30 minute video. I've got the, I've already created the slides for it. I'm not exactly sure how to pre present it yet. I was thinking about maybe I, I created the slides and put them on our um, family photo hard drive behind the TV. And I can access that from the TV and watch family videos and photos and things like that. And I can have these photos. And I thought about sitting in front of the TV and then that way I can point, but I'm just not sure how I haven't tried it yet. So I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, uh, if B is the root, which mode? A, B minor or B aeolian. D is the D major. So we're, because we're talking, all these scales are D major scales. All the notes in the key of D, which again, when, you, when you're talking about one key uh, with modes, if they're all the, the, the seven modes all share the you know, same notes in the key of C, et cetera. We have seven modes in every key. So, okay. So, um, but what I was going to say is that you can't move this up really because that, that sixth degree isn't going to work, but the, but the night uh, the second will work. So let me play this for you so you can hear, I'll hear, I'll play it. So, you know, so you can hear the wrongness of it. <laughs> so here's the major. Okay. Now I'm going to move it up. Pentatonic works. That's the note that just doesn't. That sixth note in the scale. Even the that ninth works fine because it's part of that. I'm sorry, the second is also part of the major scale. So I don't want to get too crazy on this. This is like getting kind of in the deep, the the deep end of the of the pool, and I don't want to. Uh, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to like discourage you with too much, too much at this point, kind of useless information. Um, what, what, again, what we're talking about is um, starting to see the fretboard in shapes that you're already familiar with. And that's why it's called, you know, the caged method, Cage, because everybody's familiar with the, the five chords C, E, or C, A, G, E, D. And so this is the G shape that we're using here up at the D position. Okay. So there's G. G sharp or A flat, A, A sharp or B flat, B, C, C sharp or D flat, and then here's D. And so when we play this, we've got, you know, we've got uh, we've got a D, F sharp, A. So that's three of the notes of the of the scale already. And remember with the pentatonic, when you play the full chord like this, you've got half of the notes. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this scale again. Um, and we'll just, uh, I'll just talk you through it and, um, up, up and down. Okay. Here we go. Starting at the bottom seventh fret. I'll just give you fret numbers. Now you can figure out your fingerings the way you want to do it. And, and uh, hopefully you'll get good fingers here. Here we go. Seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, position shift six. Seven, nine, uh, seven, eight, ten, seven, nine, ten. And backwards, ten, nine, seven, ten, eight, seven, shift down, nine, seven, six. Shift back up, nine, seven, ten, nine, seven, ten, nine, seven. Okay. Now 
I'm going to go ahead and put the link up for um, my my threepers uh, video. Uh, okay, I think. Uh, where did I put that? Um, I, I'm just going to have to search. Give me one second. Um, and then so if if this is too basic for you and you want to get a little bit deeper in this. Um, Wow, these are pretty old. Weird. I thought I did. Did I not do one recent? Huh. I thought I did a more recent one. Okay. Well, if you go to my channel and just enter three purrs, you'll see some videos that I did. They're pretty old with long hair. I look like, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? My hair's not that long. Show all. There's seven of them because there are seven diatonic scales. Uh, I thought I did it again. What was the deal with that? I may have called it something else. Let me check that. No. Oh, anyway. Uh, yeah. So if you just enter that, um, you should be able to find those scales. So I, I, I think I did them all in the key of G. Yeah, I did them all in the key of G. So like I said, you know, and it was that... point of this not warmed up but but it's easier to play fast um because you you have the same number of notes per string i know i don't know where everybody is it's pretty i guess people got tired of me um although maybe the internet's down a little bit in some places too i hear that it's kind of getting taxed because of people like me um all right so uh somebody said um, somebody asked me if I was going to play it. So I did a new video yes, that came out yesterday. Uh, with this, I love this strap. Isn't that a cool strap? Old school. You can see that. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> Must tune. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a, what's, it's a Harmony Bobcat. And when this came out, I, when it came out, oh, it went sharp. Um, wow, why sharp? Uh, when this came out in the sixties, uh, I think they were 8750 for the retail, which actually sounds cheap, but. 8750 actually would have been a pretty pricey maybe I don't know they they sold from the like 60s to the early 70s um, and the reason I bought this we were in Michigan Kathy we were in Pentwater we used to go to Pentwater every summer and there was a guitar store in Ludington so we not a whole lot to do well Pent Pentwater's a great little village a uh, lot to do there it's it's really pretty um, but we would go, if we wanted to, to have a lot more options, we would go to Ludington, which was a big city. And, um, uh, and so, um, so we would go to this, this guitar store and occasionally they would have vintage instruments. Um, I actually bought this there and I, I bet you, you've probably never seen I'm trying to remember what it's called. Uh, tremoloa. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. I, this is a short. This is a short video. Um, copy. I bought this there because um, I'd never seen one before. And being doing the, you know, uh, being a, a session guitar player, I'm always looking for instruments that I don't have. Um, and um, it's in the other room. I'm not going to go get it, but uh, it's a weird auto harp thing. It's like, it looks like an auto harp, but then it has a single string on it with a slide and a, a pit. It's like a built-in picker. It's crazy. Um, and I never really got you know proficient on it or anything like that. It was more just like, okay, what the heck is this? Might be something you would hang on a wall. 
Um, and it was, I guess, kind of a Hawaiian instrument called Tremoloa. And um, I bought that years ago at this store in, in Ludington, Michigan. And then um, the last time we were in Petwater, we, Alex and I, my son and I drove up to Ludington to go to the guitar store to check out, see what they had. And they, this was hanging on the wall. And, um, you know, you can't, you know, you can't get many vintage instruments, but the reason I bought this one was because it had these, these uh, gold foil pickups. And I have, you know, I have humbucker, I have guitars with humbuckers and single coil pickups. I have guitars with uh, soap bar pickups and with uh, lipstick pickups and I've even got uh, like Rickenbackers have their pickups um, and I, but I didn't have any guitars with this kind of pickup which every pickup kind of has its own signature sound so um, but the great thing about this is it's actually shorter scale and it's a smaller neck it's a narrower neck so if you've got small hands it's a little hard for me to play but if you've got small hands and you you, uh, you want to start playing electric and you want to buy a vintage guitar now these they, they have a single pickup version, which the pickup's more like here and not. And then the two pickup version, obviously, they're here and here. They also have it was an option you could get with a like a, a tremolo arm. Um, and this one doesn't have that. Um, but you could find uh, you can find the single pickup ones for under 500. And you can find these. I think I paid 375 for this maybe four years ago or three, three years ago. Um, so, so I've had this about three years, but I, I really like the sound, um, for certain things. Um, let's see. I, I used it in a movie. Uh, I don't have the sound that I want to use, so I'm not going to pull this up right now, but, um, I used it in a couple movies and things like that because, uh, a composer that I work with really likes the sound of this. So I'll use it. Anyway, you can see the review of it. So, but somebody said I'm gonna play. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Not now is not the time to buy another guitar, especially if you're, if you're not working, if you're furloughed or laid off or whatever. So, um, but anyway, it's a, it's a kind of a fun instrument. So, we, okay, we've only got 20 people. Kind of weird. Like I said, something is hopefully not anything major is happening. Um, and uh, been trying to watch DVDs and not so much Netflix so that people can watch Netflix um, if we're going to watch something. Um, though I did watch on Netflix Tiger King. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is just a whole this is just a bunch of crazy people. <laughs> OK. All right, I've got a game for us to play right now. Get Google open. Get Google open. <laughs> okay. I want you to type in. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> this is this is really not good. <laughs> Your first name. Okay. And some of you, I don't know if it were. Well, Myunk's not here today, so he's not chatted at all. Um, and then type in <laughs> Glamour. Shots, and then click on the fifth picture, and that is your glamour shot. So let's see. I, I don't know. If, let's see if I can do it here. Just Google. So Tom, glamour shots, and I think if I just click on this, uh, let's see if it's a, if it came up. Yep, the same one came up. Okay. So what's the link on this? Uh, I got to copy the link. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I can get the link on that. Dang it. How do I get the link? Open a new tab. I think it, it's a twit. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, this is a huge URL. Okay. Let's see if this, let's see if this loads. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't worry. You can do this later. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's a huge URL. I have no idea if this is going to, oh, let me, let me plug it into Safari and see if it pulls this up. It's pretty funny though. Oh yeah, it pulls up. Okay, so here you go. Here's mine. Oh, it's too many. The URL's too too big. We can't. I can't do it. You can only have 200 characters here. It was a 360 character URL. 
Oh, you did it on Facebook. Uh, okay, so it's a thing that's going around. Okay, I thought I saw a friend of mine did it. I didn't hadn't seen it anywhere else. Um, but it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Uh, my family did it. Well, here I can actually I can hold up. <laughs> I did it with the kids, and uh, we all came up with, "Oh my gosh!" I mean, here's mine. Holding a baby and a gun with a helicopter in the background. It looks like he's got puka shells. Okay. Here's my daughter's, Emma. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then, let's see. This is my son, Alex's. The cat on the shoulder. And then, <laughs> Jack. My son, Jack. I mean, it's just amazing. And then... <laughs> My wife did hers, and this is what she came up with. Can you believe that? She's blowing smoke out of the pistol. I mean, what is it with guns and glamour shots? And half, I feel like half of these are totally fake, just like parody, you know, like clearly trying to be bad glamour shots. But I'm kind of, you dig deeper into it, and it's like, nope, <laughs> these are legit. So anyway, that's a it's just a fun thing to try. You can you can do that to, for some entertainment, <laughs> get all your family to to look up their glamour shots. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Although I did do plural. Oh, really, Mark, if you do Mark, someone, a friend of mine named Mark did his. Hmm. Well, and, and then, like I said, you take the fifth one. Um, fifth, the fifth one. So Kathy, have you ever been to Pentwater, Michigan? Ludington's nice. Uh oh, my nose itches. Everybody take a drink. <laughs> You got your beer, Verdi? You know, I can't really get used to drinking out of these travel mugs. I feel like I'm spilling too much. I'm used to my coffee cup. Um, yeah, Pentwater's, Pentwater, you, you would like Pentwater a lot. It's very quiet, sleepy little, little village. Um, we would rent a house there every summer for a week or two and um, really kind of very off the grid. Pentwater is about 30 minutes south of Ludington and about 50 minutes north of um, Muskegon. You're on the other side of the state, I think, but um, it's on Lake Michigan and um, there are no chains at all in there there's not like a not even a subway everything is mom and pop so it's really really cool um and it kind of shuts down in the winter but in the summer it's just a lot of fun and they have a band they have a band shell so they'll have they'll have like susa bands come in there play uh you know every thursday night um they have it's just it's just that kind of americana kind of like you you've gone back 120 30 years uh, it feels like sometimes feels like 1890 there. Um, but uh, yeah, we used to, my mom is from Michigan and she kind of started renting the house there so that uh, we would all get together once a year. Kind of a family reunion thing. Okay, so um, we're going to hit the, uh, it's going to be the E form tomorrow. And uh, so yeah, it's called Pentwater. And you can look up pictures of it. Michigan is one of those states that most people don't, in, that you have to intentionally go there. Like Indiana, where I'm from, a lot of people have gone to Indiana because they're driving across the country and they drive through Indiana. But you don't generally drive through Michigan because it's a hand with water all around it. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't go from Wisconsin to Michigan to Canada or anything like that. You have to actually go around it. Um, so a lot of people miss Michigan and it's, it's a really... Um, it's a really beautiful state, lots of lakes um, and uh, lots of, uh, um, you know, lots of wildlife stuff, um, rivers. Um, you know, we definitely, uh, definitely enjoy going. To, and I, every summer as a kid, I went there. We went to a town called, uh, my, my grandfather built a bunch of cabins on a lake called Lake Misaki in a city called Lake City. Oh, you got where you are, you have the biggest Christmas story. <laughs> Yeah, there was one in Pasadena for years called Stats. I mean, for a hundred years, um, and I think they just recently closed a couple of years ago. But okay, so let's see. What else can we talk about? Uh, I'm 
trying to think about what we can do lessons on. Um, if you want, we can, since we got the guitars out, we can go ahead and do our warm up, our, our one, four, three, four, two, four, three, four warm up, one, four, three, four, two, four, three, four warm up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, you got to be real careful. There's a real, a lot of people hit deer in, in Michigan. They just jump across the freeway. You got to be really prepared. You know, you got to be paying attention. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do a little warm up. Uh, we'll start on the first string. First fret, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. Luke, okay, I'm sorry, I'm reading your, uh, oh, funny, it kept, uh, let's see. Luke, did, did you play guitar on the CSGO music kit? I don't know what that is, so probably no. <laughs> so, um, okay, so fifth fret, let's go one, four, three, four, two, four, Three, four, six fret. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. Get that pinky working. Seventh fret. One, four, three, four. You're in my gym. Okay, let's do the easier one of those two. Hell is also in Michigan town. Oh, there's a name of a town called Hell. There's some funny towns. I noticed that West Virginia seems to have the most funny city names. Um, okay, so um, there is uh, exercises. Yeah, here's this one. Um, oh, don't play. Share. All right. So this is the this is the two left-handed ones. I'll, I'll give, let's do another, let's do this exercise, okay? Um, let's go ahead and go to the fifth fret in case your hands are smaller and too difficult here. Go bottom string on the fifth fret and we're gonna just do four chromatic notes per string, okay? So you're gonna one, two, three, four, next string, one, two, all the way down, okay? So let's do that. Elephant, elephant, yeah, but except it's pronounced butte though, right? Okay, one, two, three, four, 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 backwards, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yes, I work with Austin. In fact, I was just texting Austin today. Um, and in fact, I was working for Austin just last week, maybe two weeks ago. Austin's a great composer. If you've ever played, you want a game that's a nice, chill video game to play. Uh, that's called Journey. I don't know if has anybody heard of Journey. Um, it's a very kind of mellow. You're flying through the desert. And you've got different things you've got to do and all that. And Austin did the music for that and actually got nominated. He was the first game composer to be nominated for a Grammy for best score. Um, and he was going up against all his heroes uh, because the best score category is all, was all, has always been film and was film except for him. And like John Williams was one of the nominees that year. Um, and so, I mean, that to be nominated with John Williams in a category for any composer, that's just a dream come true. Um, but yeah, so I guess, yeah, I did. I still work with Austin all the time. 
In fact, I just did, um, sorry, I'm touching my face again so everybody can take a drink. My nose is just itchy. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely, so if it's something that Austin did, I probably played on, although Journey I did not play on because it was just orchestra and cello and stuff like that. Um, yeah, hit the thumbs up button if you can. Um, Gotham, Wisconsin, embarrassed. Well, also <laughs> Defiance, Ohio. Always joke. I don't want to go to Defiance, Ohio. <laughs> it's like, who would name? Yeah, Journey's a beautiful, it's a really, really nice game. So it's like, you think, oh, games, you're going to be shooting people and something. No, Journey's a great game if you just want to like, it's very zen. You know, it's a very, it's like going out in a zen garden and just <laughs> raking the stones. It's just like that. Just go, okay, now you're just looking up cities. <laughs> go to go to West Virginia and you'll find a lot of funny ones. But um, uh, there's some dirty ones too. <laughs> Oh, Disputana, Dispute, boy, uh, Disputana, that's funny, I couldn't even pronounce that one, I don't think I'd live there, if I can't pronounce, I live in Granada Hills, that's pretty easy to pronounce, which is, we're not, we're actually not a city, we're, um, what is it, what's it called, just, um, it's part of Los Angeles, so technically we're in Los Angeles City, um, but yeah, so, um, guitar way. Hold on. Eh. I may shoot a review of the um, Irish bazooki this uh, today. Um, actually need to kind of believe it or not, I almost feel like I need to take a day off. I've been working every day. Um, but I've, I'm writing a lot. Um, and uh, I don't really consider this work for me. This is this is actually a lot of fun. Um, hanging out with all you alls. And I hope everybody's okay. I'm, the numbers are low. Um, and I'm wondering if there's, like I said, if, if, if some of the country doesn't have internet or something, which would be bad. Pee Wee, West Virginia, yeah. See what I mean? You'll find a lot of things like that in West Virginia. Yeah, I'm sure, Michelle. Yeah, I hope not. I hope that's a, that's a drag. But, you know, the good thing about it is I'll save this up, um, uh, save it so that everybody can um, watch it later. But um, hopefully, um, you know, they can catch up on the scales. Oh, let me hold up this one more time because I know a bunch of you um, may not have gotten it. These are the C form, A form, G form, and these are all the notes in those different positions in those forms that are um, in the key of D. And one thing you can do on this, look at the C form and see if you can find the C shape in it. It's kind of like, where's Waldo? Look at the A form scale and see if you can find that A form shape in it. And when you're playing it, try to visualize that shape too. And that will help you start to see all of the, um, the shapes up and down the fretboard. And same thing's true with the G form. Try to visualize that. Booger hole, West Virginia. See, I told you, West Virginia's got it. Got it nailed. Um, hey, Watchman, did you just log on? Can you listen to the Austin Wintry Desert Fire song? Uh, if you can remember. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I may have the original file somewhere, too, that he sent me that I played to. But I'm not sure if it's on this hard drive. See, probably not on this hard drive. But, I, yeah, I mean, I've got – I did the Pathless. Uh, I did J the John Wick game we did. Uh, two. There's another game called Two that we did. There's a, I mean, I've just got – I've got – 12 folders here from 12 different games just in the last 18 months that I played on with, with Austin for Austin. And some of them were demos, uh, a gigs maybe he didn't get, but um, Desert Fire Song by Austin Wintry. I'll, I'll check it out. Not right now, but I'll, 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 I'll open a window and put that in there. Austin Wintry. Um, Desert. 
just loaded right up. Uh, and it's called Desert Fire Song. Oh, 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 I see. There it is. See us. Yeah. And that's on oh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah. I'm, if, if there's guitar of any, or any stringed instrument at all on it, I probably played it. Um, and, uh, you know, not violin, obviously, but, um, uh, but fretted stringed instruments. Okay. Let's see. Now we're at almost at an hour. I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Verity, you're probably going to want to go over and check out that other video. Um, uh, and so I, I want to make sure the internet's not too clogged with my, <laughs> with my ramblings. Okay. But we're going to do this again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Saturday and um, that's crazy. It's just, uh, it's weird how the days are going by. Almost can't keep track of what day of the week it is. I don't know if you're having that problem or not, um, but it's, it's, it's just, it's weird. And my wife, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> thanks watchman <laughs> i try to i really try to i mean if you if you look you know the my technically my original the whole thing started out as a blog on uh blogspot uh uh i think blogspot with the pro guitar secrets where i was just giving away the you know trying to give away the secrets and i started doing the videos and um you know it basically what i've tried to share um is stuff you know that either time saving things to get better faster or little tricks I've learned along the way. Um, I mean, I've got all, you know, 450 plus videos. And um, uh, some of, like, I've just got videos, just a whole series called Cool Chords, where it's just like, what each video is a different chord. Um, like, uh, here. And actually, I'll, I'll give you, here's one that I, I may redo because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do it right. But um, the James Bond chord I wrote out is that, and that's right. That's the right chord, but it's, this is hard to play. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm hitting the bottom string. So it's zero. I thought I was going to stop, but I'm going still. Yeah. So this is, this is the James Bond chord. Okay, but there's an easier way to play this. Um, and the name of this chord would be, uh, E don't let the name scare you, but it's E minor with a major seven, E minor ninth with a major seven. Okay. Yeah. Minor major. Exactly. Um, but it's got a ninth in there or a second. Okay. But there's a easier way to play it and you can eat, uh, and it's basically this, I'm going to have to do it, um, uh, 10, nine, eight, seven, and then X or zero at the end if you want. You could have that open. But basically, you just go diagonal. So it's open, then 10, 9, 7, I'm sorry, 8, 7. And I bet that's how they played it. I don't think they did this. And the nice thing is because when I do that, I have to actually stop, hit the bass note and then the chord because I don't want to hit the E string. And I can't really deaden the E string. So. This one you can actually hit it all at once, and if you want, you can add that E string. But to me, that doesn't really quite sound like what they did. That sounds too dissonant. Yeah, but I think that's that's pretty playable. I mean, if you can do this one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, you should be able to do this. The only problem is that you're You've got to really, you may have to bring your thumb around to the back of the neck. If your thumb is too far this way, you're going to lay down your fingers. Remember, this is one of the things when, when people are having trouble making chords ring out, like I would have students like play a D chord and it would be like that. Uh, basically, it was because they were trying to grab the, the neck too much um, and they were getting the neck into the palm of their hand, which you don't want to do. I mean, I might do it on some stuff because, you know, I'm, I've like been playing the chord a million years and I don't have a problem getting a good sound out of it. However, uh, it's more do as I say, not as I do. Um, but here, uh, the reason is, and I showed this to you the other day, it's really cool, but it's basically how our hands designed. With your hand open, you can spread your fingers out. As soon as you draw your hand, to, you close your hand into a fist, all of your fingers want to go to the dead center of your palm, okay? And so if the guitar neck is in the palm of your hand, 
then your fingers have no reachability. It's not a word, but I'm, you understand. Um, but as soon as you get that palm away from the back of the neck, as soon as you get that palm away from the back of the neck, now your fingers can start doing stuff. And so you'll see me, if I'm playing an, you know, a simple chord, I may have my thumb up here. But if I'm playing a hard chord, like I always use the example of every breath you take. Oops, what is oh, My thumb is not only on the back of the neck, it's actually at the bottom of the neck to give me that reach to play that chord. And here's a little known fact. Um, uh, uh, Andy Summers actually has very small hands. So, and yet he, he played this or wrote it. hardcore to play so <laughs> is it a word it is now uh let's see yeah right yeah totally oh i see what you're saying the fifth element movie yeah the name looks like oh yeah it's i use the triangle for the turn instead of writing a capital m for major um and the way you get triangle if you don't know it's interesting because it's Alt and the letter J, and there's a band called Alt J. And I, it's actually a really good band. I really like Alt J. And um, so Alt J is the Delta symbol. So I guess they were, it was their way of calling their band the Delta symbol, which I thought was very clever. So, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm assuming why would you else you call your, your band Alt J? But uh, that's how you get the Delta symbol. And if you don't know, I think, is it, is it Alt, is it Alt, oops. Alt G, yeah, Alt G is the copyright symbol, which is interesting. I'm not sure. I don't know why it's on Alt C, but um, and that may not be true for everybody. But I'm I'm a, I'm a Mac user, so on a Mac keyboard, that's what it is. So you didn't know you were going to learn keyboard tricks on your guitar lesson. Okay, so let's get together tomorrow. We'll do the next scale. I'll try to have something else too that we can work on. Um, I need to come up with some more exercises. Watch, man. Oh, you're talking about your hands. Oh, uh, the Greek bazooki. Oh, you were asking about the Greek bazooki versus the um, Irish bazooki versus the mandolin. Okay. The Greek bazooki um, generally is tuned. It depends, but it's basically tuned like the top four strings of the guitar, maybe with a capo up higher. Um, kind of like a ukulele or something. It just depends on what kind of Greek, you know, how long the neck is. Uh, so you can kind of play it. If you can play guitar, you can play Greek bazooki. And it's got kind of a brighter sound, uh, maybe more nasally. The Irish bazooki is kind of a boomier, bigger sound. And I actually bought that, no, not so much to be an Irish bazooki, but to be an octave mandolin. Uh, because if I tune the top string to E, then it would be the same tuning as a mandolin, but down an octave. Oh, okay, good to know, AJ. Sorry, I don't want to steer anyone wrong. So, so Alt J on a on a PC is erase all hard drives. <laughs> Shoot, dang it! Don't do it. Um, so, uh, um, but yeah, and then you know the mandolin. Yeah, so that mandolin, of course, the fretboard's a lot smaller. So right now, I have my bazooki tuned um, G. See, G, D, A, D. And I want to tune that D up to E, but the tension feels real tight on there. I don't just want to break those strings. I think I ordered, um, I ordered um, some strings uh, from, from Goldtone who made that. I think that the lady at Goldtone told me that these strings could, could be tuned, the high E string could be tuned up to E, but I'm just not sure yet. So I may order strings just for it, just the top two strings, just to see if I can do it. Because it's got the loop end, like the mandolin. Um, the end the end of the... I don't know if you can see this, but yeah. So those are loop ends. So the the, the end of the string has a loop on it instead of a ball. And you can actually turn a ball string into a loop string. You just, if you take the, if you twit, turn it, like maybe a, a half a turn or a whole turn, you, the, you can take the ball out. So then, then you can use it as a loop. I might try that actually. That might be a good way to go because I've got tons of E strings. Um, I, might be able to, I might be able to tune this up to E. 
that would be great because right now it's tuned which is great i love the sound of this to go so it's a little different if it were tuned to e i, I think i would have an easier time playing it um i could play because i know all my mandolin chords pretty good so anyway all right so until tomorrow everybody have fun i'm gonna uh again end, end the stream and leave the chat up for a while so you, we can all say goodbye and all that and you guys take care of yourself i'm not sure why we're so low i hope i don't turn this off and find out that something happened with the internet <laughs> we're like oh no so talk to you soon. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.